the National Welding League Championship is back for its second year in a row. Be sure to check out last year's 2023 competition video if you haven't already. Hosting this year's competition is the beautiful campus of Pennsylvania College of Technology in Williamsport. Their motto is future made by hand, and we're about to see which handcrafted piece will crown this year's winner. I'm your host, Conchetta Salvia, and this is Clash of Trades Welding League Edition. As you can see, these booths are currently empty, but they are soon to be filled with all the competitors. 285 competitors from 101 schools have competed in the national qualifiers so far, but at this point, only 18 competitors from 14 schools remain. They are all here competing for the grand prize of $10,000 in this national welding championship. Let's go meet those competitors. When they released the names for the last 18, I was like, oh my God, and I started like jumping up and down. Last year I won Class of Trades and coming into this competition, I mean, I'm pretty confident, but at the same time, it feels like last year I had nothing to lose and now this year I have everything to lose. When we walked into the classroom, I saw all these, the, these red Lincoln bags and I love Lincoln. So I always have like, all my stuff is Lincoln. I have a red and black Lincoln backpack. So I was really excited and then when we opened it and there were so many tools, like there was clamps, there's chisels, there's wire brushes, there's a grinder, like that's, these are some expensive tools and it's great to have them. This is what you're gonna be able to use to complete the project and the kits and to get through your work. The piece of paper in front of you will be a written test. You will take that written test and once every test is done and turned over on its face, is when the competition starts. Does everybody understand that? Once they said that we would have to take a written test, I was not happy. You may begin. I'm very dyslexic, so I gotta take my time on those, so and read them like as much as I can. And even, I really do think I did well on the test, but at the same time, I'm like, who knows, things happen. I wasn't too stressed out about it. I feel like I did well. So we are currently standing in front of the projects that are soon to be revealed to the competitors. There's a lot of stuff here. It looks complicated, but let's make it even more complicated. They have to weld on stainless steel, aluminum, and mild steel. They also have to use all different welding processes, stick, MIG, TIG, and flux core. And to make matters worse, they have to weld in multiple different positions. All right, competitors, how are we feeling? Are we ready to go? Yeah. Ready? Yeah. In front of you are the parts you're going to be welding. Are you ready to find out what you're building? Isn't that beautiful? Here is what is going to change the game in welding education all over the country. Not only is it on a stand, it also is going to take no off. In this competition, you've been tasked with building a space shuttle, but the catch is you only have nine and a half hours. You feeling ready? Yeah! Three, two, one. Your welding time starts now. It's pretty crazy looking, stainless steel, mild steel, a whole bunch of fixtures to hold it together. Like, oh wow, that's gonna be a challenge. So we'll see how it goes. I'm coming into this competition with a lot of confidence. Even though I don't know everything about all the processes, I know quite a bit, and I think I can take my knowledge and I think I can turn that into something great. I'm coming into this with a hope and a prayer, my welding helmet, set of gloves, and we're just gonna duck, dodge, weave, and go with it. <laughs> Behind me here, we have the components and then we have the final fitted up product. So getting from here to here can be decently complicated because they're using three different types of steels. They're going from stainless steel to aluminum and mild steel. Now they're not welding them together, but they have to change processes and styles when they're going from each of those metals. First thing I did this morning, I was, I got in my booth, got all my materials laid out, organized. After that, started fitting stuff up. I'm looking at the technical data package. I'm trying to read all the directions because that's something when we came here, they said 
like we needed to pay attention to the direction. Having a better understanding of everything in my head is better than making mistakes. Aluminum's always gonna get distorted, so I gotta make sure I'm taking my time and I know what I'm doing. It's way harder. Getting everything fit together, tacked together right, I mean, it ain't gonna be easy at all. So that's what I'm trying to figure out now, how to do all that without breaking the sucker. From the start, I wasn't feeling good, and I just wasn't going at a pace I usually go at. I had to look for the notes and make sure I was doing the right thing at the right time. Last year I learned that time is key, but don't rush yourself too much, because you never know with these competitions. There's like the littlest criteria. Time is key in this one too. For them to get to this point that we're at today, they had to have their foot on the gas, they had to go into school early, stay late, work their butt off to get to this point. They are gonna be tried in so many different ways because they're not only gonna just have to know how to weld, they're gonna to have to know the theory behind welding. They're gonna to have to know how to weld on aluminum and stainless and mild steel and all the processes. Those are all the knowledges that they had to gain over the last two to three years to get to this competition. Absolutely phenomenal. One of the awesome things about these types of competitions is all these sponsors are together in one place. And here we have Stacia, the owner of Edge Welding Cups, one of our sponsors. So do you want to take it away and tell us about your product? Absolutely. The competitors are actually using our product today as we speak on their projects. So the other neat thing is that we've been able to design and develop laminar flow, which is a really critical part in welding. It allows the gas coverage to be very premium and spot on, which is a really critical part for a premium quality weld. Do you have any examples of your products in the industry? Yeah, absolutely. For example, ironically, we're doing rockets today for the, the competition, and we actually, our cups are used with, by SpaceX and NASA and Blue Origin to build the rockets and the space stations. What a perfect fit. Alrighty, everyone, the competition has started. The contestants are working very ferociously to get this stuff done. Let's go check in and see how they're doing. It's pretty intense. You got pipe welds on here. You got aluminum tube welds on there. I mean, you're seeing it all. The biggest challenge for me was just being able to put the welds in the right location. Oh, man, it's a challenge, all right. You got to come here with a warrior mentality. There's really good welders here, so like, I probably would be the most surprised person here if I won this one. But anything could happen in the welding competition, so you just never know. Yeah, it pretty much said it right there. <laughs> we are here right now with Jim Colton, a assistant professor at the Pennsylvania College of Technology. So in the last few days, I, I've seen you judging, seen you going around. How how has that been going so far? What have you seen? It's kind of interesting how they uh, have approached the project. Some dove right in and started, you know, bending the, the shuttle and, and tacking it. Others read through the whole packet and looked at everything and then, then started. There are still a need for welders out there, which is why, you know, Project MFG, bridging that gap between all of those jobs, it's very important. Very excited to see who comes out on top in this competition. It has been a crazy day so far, and these competitors have just about an hour left. Let's go see how they're doing. What weld are you starting on right now? I'm gonna start on this back plate. Back plate, what process are you using? Meg. Meg? Yep. Okay, do you feel confident in your MIG skills? Definitely. Awesome, good luck. They're in the thick of it right now. I'd like the competitors to pay a little closer attention to detail, but it's mostly positive. Everything seems to be turning out pretty good. You know what, there's no winners and losers in this, so. Yeah, nope, everyone That's gains experience. Yep, you got this far, you're a champion, no matter where you're from. We're halfway through the day and it's going pretty good. A little bit slower than I would like, but also my fit up is really good, so I'm happy with where I'm at. I was doing fine, and then I kind of, I broke a piece, but I welded it back together. I have to do the aluminum next and the stainless. If I rush those and they get distorted, then it's not gonna look like a space shuttle. It might look all droopy and ugly, so I, I don't want that to happen. In welding competitions, competence is very relative. I'm still pretty good. I'm a little bit nervous. I haven't ever done anything this big before. It's a challenge for sure. There's a lot of different welds to do, a lot's going on. Trying to stay on top of it all is yeah. very difficult. I think I've checked the prints like five times before making a bead. 
a little less than 30 minutes left of this competition. Tensions are rising. It is getting hot in here. People are really working to get these final pieces done. I put in a lot of work towards this. Um, I didn't even think I was going to make it this far, and so the fact that I made this far is crazy to me. I did not think I was going to be the first one to finish. I kept peeking in everybody else's booth, and they looked way further along than I did. These competitions are so tight, and I respect every single one out there because anything can happen. Nice job. Thank you. I learned a lot. I've gotten to practice more processes than I have in the last year. No matter what, I feel like I won in some way. Reading this would mean a lot to me and a lot to my family back home. The competition is finally over. Let's go check in with the judges. Do you guys have people kind of further ahead and further back than others? Yeah. It's they're all pretty close. Yeah, it's yeah, early. It's, it's, it's all pretty close. Right now, it's pretty early. early so yeah. okay, so still anyone's game. So what specifics are you looking for? Wall quality, fit ups. Attention to detail. I would like to re-emphasize attention to details. Paying attention to the small details is something that yeah, like they welding need to be on doing. the inside, you know, yeah, and then you can't see it, kind of thing. They had instructions on their okay. print, so did they follow those instructions at this step? already proven that you have what it takes to be the change in the American trade industry. You are the top 18 out of 285 participants in this competition this year. So please, give yourself a hand. The judging could not have been easy. It was, it was a close race, I'm sure. So let's go and hear what our judges have to say. I just want to let you know that you all are winners. You did very well. If I had to say one thing to each one of you, I gotta say, pay attention to notes when you get them on drawings. Because when you go forward, you're gonna see a lot of that. And I'd like to reiterate, paying attention to details in work steps. Uh, for example, on the 12, 3, 6, and 9 tax, not a lot of people paid attention to those details. And that was something that was looked at pretty importantly. You needed three starts and stops marked at the end. That wasn't done, there was two people that did it. Came out not all details, it was the difference in some of the points, so. Congratulations. Are you guys feeling good? Are you excited to find out who won this thing? You are all winners. We already know that. But there are three of you who stood out during this competition. In third place, winning $2,500, we have Bruxton Lear. I just graduated high school about a week ago now, so happy with competitions and happy with my career. And I get to call myself a two-time placer and national champion of Project m &G. And in second place, winning $5,000, we have Brayden Miller. My heart was pounding in my chest, just waiting on the places to be called. And as soon as it hit second place and I heard my name, I just felt so shocked that I placed second out of all the good welders that I competed against. In first place, we have Ben Blanton. Coming off of winning Clash of Trades, like, you know, within the month, and then turning around, coming right back here, winning first again. I, I don't know how I did it. <laughs> I wasn't expecting it at all. There are some amazing welders with amazing stories, and they're all contacts on my phone now. People I can call if I need a hand or anything like that. So, I mean, that's huge. That's, that's more valuable than anything personally to me. One more, baby. <laughs> Thanks for joining us on another episode of Clash of Trades. This wouldn't be possible without our sponsors. Department of Defense, IVAS, Lindy Gas and Equipment, Edge Welding Supply, and Lincoln Electric. And of course, a huge thank you to all the trade schools that have participated. If you would like to help Project MFG on its journey to close the trade worker deficit, be sure to visit us online. Also, be sure to follow, like, and subscribe Project MFG across all socials. 
We'll see you again soon.